Right, so yesterday we had seen about basics of test NG, what is the test annotation method, okay. We saw the commands like depends on method, we saw how to skip the test cases, we saw how to run them in batch, right. I also talked about assertions wherein you can validate your stuff, okay, there are two types of assertions we talked about, okay. And uh, let, let, let's move further on and I'll talk about the test ng annotations now. Right. Uh, now suppose you have a test function. And right, and I'll just write over here system dot out dot then Okay, when you run this file, it will simply print in the output uh, like this. Executing test A and executing test B. Okay, now you can have another annotation known as at the rate before test. Okay. And I'll write sub public void um, any name of the function, any function, say x, y, z, or um, before. Okay, and in this I will write just this thing. Okay. And I'm going to write another annotation called after test. And in this, I'll just write after test. Okay. Now, if you run this, you will see that the output is something like this. Before test gets executed, executing test, executing test B and after test gets printed. So, before test and after test annotations, they are called before and after executing all the test cases in a single file. Okay, the order does not matter. I can write after test annotation over here as well. Before, before test annotation. The order does not matter. You can keep it anywhere. Okay, so before test is called in the very beginning. Right, now there are other annotations as well. Uh, like one of the annotations is at the rate before method okay and I'll write it over here public void before met after method Okay, and in before method you simply write system dot out dot print ln before method and in after method you simply write system dot out dot print ln after method. Okay, 
Now when you run it as a test in the test, you will see the output like this. Uh, the before test is called in the very beginning. Okay. The before method and after method functions are called for every test. Okay. For every test method, Right. Before and after executing every test, these two functions are called. So maybe you want to execute every test on a different browser. Okay. So you can open the browser in a before method function and in the test annotation you can do the testing. And in after method annotation you can close the browser. Okay. It depends on you. It depends on how you want to implement but this is the sequence. There is a predefined sequence in which these functions are called. You cannot alter that sequence. Okay. So th this is in inbuilt in test ng. Right. Now there is another function known as at the rate before test suite. and after suite now this is related to test suite not a single test case okay so to manage this annotation right what we will do is we will actually use Right. So to manage this annotation, we will add this test case, test ng annotations class. Okay. We'll add it into test ng.xml because through test ng.xml we do the suite level execution. Okay, the test suite is executed in test ng.xml. So I'll add another test case over here. Name will be simple annotations and I'll add it over here like this. Now, although this test case will be executed in the end, because in testng.xml the tests are executed in the serial order from the first to the last, but since it has got the before suite and after suite methods, those methods will be executed in a in, with a priority. Okay. You will see that if I run this test, if I run this test as a test ng suite, I run everything, okay. I look at the results. You will see that these three test cases are executed, okay. And in console, you will see that the first function which is called is the before suite function, which is actually in the test case, which is executed in the end. All right, and after suite function is called in the end. Right. So, for example, way 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 we can use this. If you use the older version of Selenium RC, which I think some of you might have used, okay, then uh, you need to start a server over there and stop a server. So, generally, what I used to do was in the very beginning, in the before suite function, I used to start my server, and in the after suite, that is when everything ends, I used to simply stop the server. Okay, so you can also execute it like this. Now, there is another annotation to read the data. That's known as the data provider annotation, right? So, hold on. I'll, I'll create a new class called read data. Now, suppose I have a test case. I have at the rate test annotation, okay, and 
the test annotation says it is public void. Uh, say the test is for login. Okay. Now, login has got different parameters which can be supplied into this test. So, for example, you can supply a username and a password. Okay. And maybe you want this test to be executed more than once with different username and a different password. Alright. So, you want to repeat this test with a different set of credentials, a different username and a different password. So, you, you have got three sets of usernames and passwords with which you, can, you want to execute this test. Okay. So, to execute this, what we do is we use something known as data provider. Okay. It is something like this. It's another annotation known as data provider. And it's like this public object get data. Well, this function returns your two dimensional object array. Okay, and that two dimensional object array looks something like this. It has got rows and columns. Depending on how many rows and columns you want to make. Okay. In every row you have the test data. You will have the test data in every row. Okay. And the number of rows would be equal to number of times you want to execute your test. Alright. And number of columns would be equal to number of parameters in your test. For example, username and password in this case. So, in this case, we will just have two columns. Right. So, we will make a two dimensional object array like this. Object data equals to new object. Say now, right. And I'll write over here 3, 2. What do you mean by writing 3, 2? It is actually rows and columns. So, number of rows are 3. That means I want to execute this test 3 times. And number of columns are 2. Right? Because there are 2 parameters using in password. So, I'll fill up the data in this object array. I'll write data 0. 0 equals to username 1. Just taking a hypothetical example. And 0 1 equals to password 1. Alright. Then data 1 0 1 1 2 0 2 1. And u 2 p 2 u 3 3. Okay, and in the end, you simply write one single line that is return data. So, what this function will return you back will be a two dimensional array. Fine, so you have got two columns, so that's why every time I am filling up two entries over there and three rows. So, this test will be executed three times. Only thing is you have to link this test with this data provider. You have to tell test ng that this is the data provider for this test. Right? So you tell test ng by writing like this that the data provider equals to get data. Okay? And secondly, number of input parameters of this function should be same as number of rows in the two dimensional array. So, if there are two rows in the two dimensional array over here, then you have to have two input parameters in this function. Okay. 
So now if you write over here system dot out dot print ln username plus password and you run this class array data you right click on it run it as test ng test I have executed the single class and you are you are getting the output total test runs were three okay and you see that this gets printed right so everything happens by itself you just have to do the linkage that's it behind the scene test and you automatically reach that this is the data provider for this test gets the data and calls this function as many times as number of rows in this okay if you look at the results of running the read data this thing you will see that it is being called three times with three different sets of data u1, p1, u2, p2 and u3 ok right now what if you by mistake sometimes what happens people forget to write the parameters here right for example I just write the string username over here nothing else I don't write, I don't give the option for writing the, I don't write the another parameter called password into parameter. In this case, if I run this test, you will see that it fails. Right? And it clearly tells you a message that the data provider is trying to pass two parameters, but the method test cases dot read data slash login takes one. So you have to make sure that the number of parameters in this function are equal to the ones just a minute, are equal to the total number of columns that is two columns. Fine. Right. So later on what we will do is we will actually read this data the complete data from uh, you can say uh, from an XML file or an Excel file or basically from an external source. We will not keep the data here. Okay. So we will see how to read the data from the external source and uh, we will certainly move forward. Okay. Right. Now just a minute let me open up my website and check out if I am not missing anything in test engine. Hold on. Okay. Right, we are almost done. Right. Uh, this thing known as the ant and all, I will talk about when I talk about frameworks. Okay, I will not talk about right now. Okay. I will talk about ant when I am doing the framework with you. Right. Now, uh, sometimes uh, what happens is that uh, I'll talk about assertions in a little detail now. Okay, if I create a new class called validations, what are assertions used for? They are used for validations. Okay, now if you Oh, I think it's the main function. If you are having a test function, okay, and suppose in this I write the code for web driver okay web driver driver equals to new Firefox driver which we have studied earlier as well okay 
and I include the Selenium jar files in this project. Hold on. And I write over here driver dot get http gmail dot com. Okay. Now suppose I have Gmail over here. I open up Gmail and suppose I I want the to compare the title of the pages, right? So the title of Gmail is actually this title. So you have the expected title here. Okay. And you have the actual title here, like this driver dot get title. And I want to compare them and report if they both do not match. So obviously for that I'll use assertions. I'll as I talked yesterday, I'll use assert dot assert equals. Right. Now look, this is the mistake which most of the people do and even I have done. Look, assert class is present in the J unit framework as well as assertion as well as test ng. Accidentally, I imported the one I used, the one from the J unit framework. Okay, so please don't do that, right? So delete this line and import it from the test ng framework. Okay, so I have imported this assert class from test ng now, right? So in test ng. You have the actual value first and then expected. In JUnit, it is the other way around. The expected is first and actual is later on. Okay. So make sure you I always import the test ng uh, thing, right? Now you give the actual title over here and expected title over here. Okay. Now I'm just going to print a out here. and B out here. I'll tell you what I'm doing. Hold on. Okay. If I run this code, it opens up the browser and goes to Gmail. Okay. And it compares the title. And if you look at the output, um, well, the test has passed and it prints both A and B. Right. Now, if I deliberately give a wrong title, okay, I append X over here and I am giving a wrong title expected. Now, if you are running this code, if you run this, what will happen is, obviously the test will fail, right? In the results, a failure is reported, okay? The Gmail was expected was expected and all you get all all the stuff right. If you look at the console, you have got test runs one, failures one. But if you look at the output, you see that only A is printed, B is not printed. So the line on which the error is coming, the line on which the exception. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The line on which the exception is actually failing, okay, the control is not going after that particular line, right? 
the control is just before that particular line it is not after that particular particular line so these not representative now this kind of error is very small error that is you might want that file if the titles do not match you just need to report an error and move uh, forward you just don't want to stop on that particular line right so it's not a very serious thing that you should simply stop the execution of the test case okay so my requirement now is that a should be printed and error should be reported and then b should be printed the program should not stop okay to avoid this what i can do is i can put this whole thing in a try and a catch block like this okay instead of writing exception e for throwable for for uh, for sorry uh, assertions we write throwable okay throwable is the class which helps you to catch the assertion errors exception cannot catch okay so we write throwable over here and i will write out here system dot out dot print ln error okay so in case there is an assertion error coming up right the control will go inside the catch block error will be printed and it will move further on right so we don't have that situation now in which the program abruptly ends fine so if you run this code validations right click over here run it as test and it is right now if you look at the output if you look at the console you will see that a error and b is getting printed okay so i am able to continue forward with my test i am able to avoid the test being abruptly ending right but the problem is that the test is passing okay so i have resolved one issue but one more issue has popped up that the test is passing the test should have been failing because the titles do not match there is an exception or there is a throwable uh, the control is going inside the cache block there is an error okay so i fixed the problem but one more problem raised that is uh, the test started passing up so now i want to report this test as a failure for that we will be using uh, something known as a listener and all so hold on i have already implemented it i'll give you the code it's quite big code hold on all right so to do this you need to do two things you need to keep two files with you okay hold on i'll create a new package here called utility package okay and in this i'll keep this class and hold on i'll tell you what i'm doing and i'll keep this class okay Hold on. Now this is a class called test listener adapter dot Java. Okay. 
this class is automatically called by uh, test ng after the test has been completed after invocation function this test is automatically called by test ng how does it how does test ng call it it's something you have to tell test ng in test ng dot xml you have to write the class name like this hold on you will understand just give me one minute okay in test ng dot xml i am writing utility dot test ng listener adapter this is a listener that means this class right test listener adapter would be called oh, just a minute yeah this class test listener adapter after invocation function would be called after the test is over okay and this file error util dot java has got two functions add the verification failures and get the verification failures okay error util is like a basket okay you can keep on adding the errors in the basket right by calling the function add a verification failures okay suppose we have got five errors in a test and you are using five try catch blocks like this like the one which i am using so in the try catch block you can keep on writing like this in the catch block you can write error util dot add verification failure e okay so you can keep on adding as many errors into error util it's like a basket okay if you have to add five errors maybe somewhere over here you are doing some other validation as well you can keep on adding errors and when the test is over the after invocation function is called and what it does is from the error util it gets the verification failures and this function actually has got some code which communicates with the reports and all everything okay so you just need to keep it like this right just there are three simple steps add these file add this file and in testng.xml add the listener okay. after that you can simply add error util like you can add run validations.java from here okay right now to execute this test this test has to be executed from test ng.xml why because it's the test ng.xml has the reference to the listener class that's why so you'll have to give one more test called as validations over here and it will be in the test cases validations class okay now if you right click on test ng.xml run it as a test ng sheet so you will observe that hold on validation spelling mistake be very careful guys is validations right so if you right click on this and you run it as a test and you see so now yeah you see that the test listener adapter function is called again and again and now the browser open that goes to gmail the titles would be compared here okay and if you look at the results the validation test is failing there is an assertion error coming up and along with that both a and b are getting printed okay so this is how you can avoid your program to actually stop right and along with that you can do the validation as well so you just have to use try catch block and in the try catch block you can keep on adding the errors in the error util 
and as I told you, error util file is just like a basket. Fine. So, uh, guys, this is about test ng. This is all about test ng.